Congratulations on the purchase of your Lascar USB probe data logger with LCD display and external thermostore glycol bottle probe. This device has the capability to capture up to 32,510 readings within the measurement range of minus 40 to 125 degrees Celsius. In this video, I will discuss how to install the EasyLog software, how to configure the data logger, how to read the display and the alarms. I will also demonstrate how to collect and read the data. This video has multiple chapters. If you need to, you can save some time by jumping to the chapter you need. To begin, let's talk about the battery. A one-half AA battery is included and pre-installed. However, if you need to install or change your battery, you will need a small tool to remove the battery cover. I find that a jeweler screwdriver works best. Remove the cap and locate the small silver clip on the side of the data logger. Take the jeweler screwdriver and press down on the clip until you feel the cover give way. This may require a little practice. Remove the cover and replace or insert the battery, paying attention to the polarity. You should notice the LED lights flash when the new battery is properly installed. Slide the cover back on and you're ready to set up the data logger. Now, let me demonstrate how to install the EasyLog software. This software is necessary for you to use your data logger. It is used to configure the logger, download the data, read the data, as well as perform other functions. To begin, log into a computer that you will use to connect the data logger to. Make sure a USB port is available and that the computer is running Microsoft Windows. Also, make sure you have permissions on the computer to install software. Open a web browser, we're using Microsoft Edge, and go to easylogusb.com. At the top of the page, you will see the EasyLog USB software box and a download button. Click on the download button and a small box should appear showing the name of the download file and the progress. When the download is complete, click on Open File. The installation is very basic. Just acknowledge the agreement and follow the prompts. When finished, click the Finish button. A second part of the install will immediately launch, the USB device driver installation. The software will scan your system for a few moments, install the driver files, then tell you the installation was successful. Now that the installation is complete, we need to set up and start the data logger. To begin, insert the data logger into a USB port and launch the EasyLog software. After a few moments, a menu should appear. Select the first option, set up and start the data logger. The first two options are very easy. Give the data logger a name. And if you want the temperature scale to be Fahrenheit or Celsius, I will change the name to Pharmacy Fridge next to the name and change the temperature scale to Fahrenheit. You will also need to make sure the thermostore is set to Type A. The third option is how often you want the data logger to log the temperature. The more frequent, the faster the memory fill up. The software conveniently shows you how long it will take to fill the logger's memory based on frequency. Click the drop down box and make a selection. For this demonstration, I will select 10 minutes, then click on Next. The next window is for configuring the LCD display and what the logger should do when the memory is full. You have three options when configuring the LCD display. LCD is to remain off, even after a button press. This is a good option if security is an issue. The LCD is on for 30 seconds after a button press. This is the most common setting. LCD is always on. In this demonstration, I will choose the second option. Take a moment to read the message below the LCD display configuration regarding prolonged use of the LCD and its behavior in cold temperatures. Below the LCD configuration are options what the data logger should do when the memory is full. Logger will stop, which is what is recommended, or the logger will continue to log, but it will begin to overwrite the oldest data, which cannot be recovered. I'm going to keep the default option to stop the logger. After clicking on Next, you will see the temperature alarm settings. You can choose to set a high or a low alarm by clicking on the box next to the alarm. 
check both boxes and you will be alerted to both. Just to the right is a box with an option to disable the LEDs. If disabled, the LED lights will not show the status at any time. I am going to leave it unchecked. Since I checked both alarm boxes, I will need to configure when to activate the alarm. Starting with the high alarm, I will select 45 degrees. For the low alarm, I'll keep it at 32 degrees. You may have noticed there is a box to the right of the temperature alarm settings with the word HOLD next to it. If you want the data logger to inform you of an alert condition, even after conditions return to normal, check the box. This can help you in case something happens, such as a temporary loss of power. Click Next and you can configure the number of consecutive readings before the LEDs indicate an alarm condition. The time is determined by the time between readings and the number of readings you choose. Since I've configured each reading to be 10 minutes apart, the value of 2 means the data logger would have to be in an alarm condition for 20 minutes before the LED will report the alarm. I will keep the value at 1. Finally, you'll be prompted when you wish to start the data logger. You can choose to start immediately, when the button is pressed, or at a specific date and time. If you choose to start immediately or push of the button, right before you place the data logger into the recording location, there's a chance there will be an immediate alarm because the logger has not had a chance to adjust to the environment. That said, I will choose to start the data logger in an hour. You can now safely eject the thermometer from the USB port and place it into the desired location. If you configure the data logger to start by pushing the button, don't forget to do so. You will want to check the LCD periodically for status, especially if the LED shows there was an alarm. First, let's examine the layout of the display. The two or three digits in the middle represents the current temperature reading. The negative symbol is to represent a value under zero. C or F represents the temperature scale. The up arrow represents the maximum log value. The down arrow represents the minimum log value. If the data logger is primed to start at a specific date and time, DS, delayed start, will appear on the display when the button is pressed. If the LCD is set to always on, the temperature will automatically appear after the start time is reached. When the data logger is primed but configured not to start until the button is pushed, PS, push to start, will continuously flash on the display. After pushing the button, the word LOG will start to flash on the display to inform you that the logger has started recording. After a few moments, the temperature will appear. If the logger is configured for the display to always remain on, the temperature will remain on the screen. If the button is pressed and the data logger is running in LCD OFF mode, only LOG will appear. If you push the button and see dashes, this is to let you know the data logger has not been set up for logging. If the LCD is not set to LCD OFF and the data logger is actively reading, you can press the button to review some of the readings from the current session. Press the button once to read the current temperature. Press the button a second time to read the highest recorded temperature. Press the button a third time to read the lowest recorded temperature. Press the button a fourth time to cycle back to the current temperature. Whenever you stop pushing the button, the display will clear after a few seconds. Again, you will want to periodically check the thermometer for any alarms. A green single flash every 10 seconds means the data logger is currently logging and there are no alarms. A green single flash every 20 seconds means the data logger is currently logging and there are no alarms, but the battery is starting to run low. A green single flash every 30 seconds means the data logger is not currently logging, but is primed to start at a later date and time. If there is a green double flash every 20 seconds, the memory is full and the data logger has stopped logging, but no alarms have been triggered. A red single flash every 10 seconds means the data logger is currently logging, but there is a low temperature alarm. A red single flash every 20 seconds means the data logger is currently logging, but there is a low alarm and the battery is starting to run low. A red double flash every 10 seconds means the data logger is currently logging, but there is a high temperature alarm. 
A red double flash every 20 seconds means the data logger is currently logging, but there is a high alarm and the battery is starting to run low. A red and green single flash every 20 seconds means the memory is full and has stopped logging. An alarm high, low, or both has been triggered. No LEDs flashing. The data logger has stopped, the data logger hasn't been primed, the battery is dead, or one needs to be installed. For your convenience, here's a list of LED codes and their meanings. You can download the data from the data logger to your computer at any time. Remove the cap from the data logger and plug it into the USB port on the computer that has EasyLog USB installed. After launching EasyLog USB, select Stop the USB Data Logger and Download the Data. A prompt will appear asking if you're sure you want to stop the logger and save the data. I will select Yes. A message will appear saying that the data logger has been stopped. You will see the name of the data logger and the number of readings that it took. Press OK and a window will appear that will allow you to select where to save the file and an option to give the file a different name. Click Save, click OK, and the download will begin. After a few moments, a window with a graph will appear. Looking at the graph, you will see three lines. The two differently dotted lines represent the high and the low alarm settings. The solid line represents the recorded temperature. At the very bottom, you'll see the date and time range the data logger was reading. Using your mouse, you can scroll over the graph. If you look at the bottom of the window, you can view the details of the reading at that particular time and date. If you don't wish to see this data, you can right-click on the mouse and select No Tools. Clicking on Result Tools will restore the view. Below the graph, you will see three graph legends with a checkbox, Fahrenheit, Low Alarm, and High Alarm. If you uncheck the box next to the name on the legend, that line will be removed from the graph. Of course, if you put a check back in the box, the line will return. You can select a range to close in on by creating a box around a selected area. You can return to normal viewing by right-clicking on the mouse and select Clear Zoom. I can also click on the magnifying glass with a minus sign in it. There are also other viewing options that will help you read the details from the log file. Click on Mark Samples and you will see dots appear on the solid line. Each dot represents the moment the data logger recorded a reading. If you click the option again, the dots will be removed. Click on Statistics and the window will appear on the right. The current view will show you the details of the selected area of the graph. Full sessions will show the statistics from when you start and stop the data logger. Click on Data View and you will see the data in a text view instead of a graph. You will see that some temperature readings are in red, which indicate a high reading, and some are in blue, which indicate a low reading. If you wish, you can click on the icon Show Alarms Only in the upper right corner to view the alarm readings. Click on it again and the alarm readings will return. You may have also noticed that the data logger serial number appears on this screen. To return to the graph, click on Graph View. Let's take a look at other actions you can perform from the menu. Click on the folder to load other data that has already been saved. Click the disk to save the data that you are currently viewing. This is useful to save the data to another location. The watch face opens a window to allow you to type in a desired date and time range to view. Export provides multiple options to output your data and graphs to different formats. CSV data. Saving the data in this format will allow you to import it into another application. JPEG, graph. To save an image of the graph in the common image format. PDF data. To save the data in text form in a PDF image format. PDF graph, same as JPEG graph but can be saved in PDF format. Excel format, save both the data and graphic in a format that can be used by Microsoft Excel. The summary report creates a professional looking PDF graph that contains a complete summary report. 
You can also click on the drop down menu options to make your selection. You can review downloaded data anytime you wish by clicking on View Previously Saved Data from the main menu. After you click on the button, simply browse to where you save your data and select the file you wish to view. After you have downloaded the data from your data logger, it will need to be reprimed in order to use it again. Easy enough. Just click on Setup and start the USB data logger from the main menu and repeat the same procedure at the beginning of the video. You will need to go through the wizard again, but all your previous selections will remain. If you have no changes to make, simply keep clicking Next until you reach the last screen. Again, choose when you wish to start reading, and then click Finish. All set and your data logger is ready for a new reading session. Thank you for watching. We hope this video has helped you. If so, please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe so you'll be notified of any future videos. Also, check out our website and browse our large inventory of solutions.